and welcome to Socially Distant Discover Nature. These videos at the moment are covering the actual sessions that we did in the real world, in real life, so that is very good. And in our latest session at St Nick's we did a bit of tree identification, walking around the reserve, looking at signs of autumn, you can see some of the leaf colour is starting to change, but mainly we were trying to identify as many species as possible. I think we got up to 13 species on the list, which was great. I'm not going to go through them all today, because uh, life is precious, but I will cover a few common species that you can see out and about that I found, or we found as a group, were fairly easy to identify. There are numerous features you can look out for in order to identify a tree that provide you with extra information to work out what it is. So I've listed these as buds, leaves, fruits, seeds, growth form. The last one doesn't really fit into the rhyme. Doesn't matter. We'll start with my favourite tree from an identification point of view, and I suppose any point of view, which is the ash tree, Fraxinus excelsior. Even the name is friendly and pleasing to say. This is a tree that appears to have grown purely to make life easy for budding botanists. That's a terrible pun. The leaf is quite easily recognised. It is large and it actually is made up of several smaller leaflets, which are you know, micro leaves, which are paired down the side and then you've got one on the end, which is a little bit of a stalk. So that whole thing is classed as the leaf made up of miniature leaflets, little component leaves. The buds on ash trees are also really easy to identify. They're black when they're mature, and to me they look a little bit like a sort of horse's hoof or a cattle hoof, some weird animal little thing. But they're, they're black, and that's a really good identification feature. There aren't really any other trees other than ash trees that have black buds when they're mature. And we've We've been looking at ash trees on St. Nick's all, all year, and I don't think we've ever found an ash tree that doesn't have some black buds on it somewhere at some time. Another quick word about the buds. The buds can be arranged on plants either opposite or alternate. Now, the ash tree has opposite buds, so the buds are in pairs opposite one another on each side of the stem. Pair, pair, pair. The way you can remember it is, think ash, fire, you've poked the, the bud into the fire, it's burned, created ash, and it's blackened it. The seeds of the ash tree are in this kind of papery form, which are called ash keys, which are clumped together on the tree, and they'll sort of float and get carried off by the wind. Ash keys are a great identification feature. These clumps of them can be seen quite far off, and even when the tree has no leaves, pretty much guarantee there'll be clumps of ash keys on somewhere. So not only can you identify the tree from a distance, but you can identify it in the middle of winter when there's no leaves. The final piece of the puzzle is the growth form. If you look at the kind of tips of the branches or the, the twiggy bits, there's a kind of curving upwards to the growth form as if they're saying, come on, I'm an ash tree, bring it. So you can add together all these bits of information. You've got the black buds, you've got grey bark, you've got those uh, leaflet formations, you've got the growth form, bring it on, and you've also got the ash keys. Put all that together and you've identified an ash tree. Next we're going to cover the hazel tree, which is another really good one. Lots of information you can get from this. Obviously, first of all, there are hazelnuts which might be on it, although Strangely, at St. Nick's we rarely see them, and it's thought that that's because the squirrels eat them before they're even mature. So we can't really use hazelnuts as a key to identify hazel trees, at least not on St. Nick's. The main feature is the leaves, which are kind of big and round, slightly sort of fuzzy, hairy to the touch, and they all have this little sort of punk crest point to them. The edges are slightly serrated, slightly jaggedy, not too much, but whatever the, the shape of them, they should all have that little point on the top. Hazel is easily coppiced, so coppicing is when the tree stem is chopped, either by humans, 
which they've done for many, many years to make long poles, or it's nibbled by an animal, that stem is kaput, but then multiple stems grow from it and up and outwards. And pretty soon you get a extremely uber multi-stemmed bush-like thing. I've heard it described as a, a basket of sticks, and indeed some of these long hazel poles will be used for gardening, for sort of bean poles, growing plants off them. But it's very distinct. You'll walk along and you'll see a tree that doesn't have one it's like solid trunk, as in a child's drawing of a tree. It's got multiple long, thin stems, all seeming to sprout up from a central base. And that is a good indication that it's a hazel. There are some other trees that cop as well. Willow is one of them, but think hazel and add it to the other information so your rounded leaves with a little crest. The buds on the hazel tree are alternate, so they're on one side of the stem and then the other, and the stem itself seems to ever so slightly zigzag between the buds, so it goes along, there's a bud on one side, slightly bends direction, then there's a bud and another one. So just look at this on the very tips of the branches, the very tips of the stems, and you might see that subtle zigzagging. And yeah, the, uh, the final thing to look out for are the flowers, particularly the, the male flowers are extremely obvious, they're the catkins, uh, also known as lamb's tails, long, sort of dangling, yellow, fluffy, spreading the pollen throughout the wind, very distinctive. The, the female flowers are much more subtle, they're really tiny, they look like a tiny little pink sea anemone. I'm not sure I have a photo of those, but uh, I'll try to get one out, or we'll get one for next week's episode. So yeah, that's your hazel tree. Put all the information together, rounded leaves with the crest, basket of sticks grow form, alternate buds, ever so slight zigzagging stem, potentially catkins, and also, I guess depending on your area, hazelnuts. So a nice package of information there for the hazel tree. And that's it for this week, so until next time, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.